Hi, this is Andy Watterson, and in this segment I'm going to show you how to get started with version 3 of the TI PinMux tool. I'm going to do this by walking you through adding and customizing a few peripherals from the tool. After you have installed and started the application, you will see this start screen. From here you can select your device, the specific device variant and package. On the right you will find shortcuts to recently created projects. From here you can also open an existing project. Once you have selected your device, you will be taken to the main configuration page. Down the left side of the page are the peripherals available on this device variant and package. In the center of the page is the configuration for the currently selected peripheral. And on the right is the physical representation of the device package. I'm going to start by adding a UART to my configuration. After it has been added, you will see the tool has automatically selected one of the available UARTs and provided a pin configuration for that UART. In the physical view, I can see which pins have been selected, and if I hover over them, I can get additional details about each pin. I can customize the UART to better fit the needs of my design. First, I'm going to change the name to represent what this UART will be used for. I know that the logger does not require hardware flow control, so I'm also going to change the use case to be that of a two-pin UART. When I change the use case, the list of pins required for that peripheral are automatically updated to reflect the use case. Use cases are a powerful feature of the PinMux tool and let you quickly select the set of pins appropriate for the function you need to implement in your design. Now I'm going to continue adding additional peripherals to my design. Fast forward a little bit. If your design requires many peripheral signals to be pinned out to device pins, you may eventually run into a case where the tool is unable to find a MUX configuration which allows all the requirements you have entered to be satisfied. Resolving a pin conflict may be a non-trivial task. To resolve a pin conflict, you essentially need to examine the source of the conflict and try to locate a requirement that can be modified to permit the tool's solver to arrive at a solution. For example, if I add a spy to this design, I immediately get a conflict error on CS3. If I hover over the details for the conflict, I notice that a possible placement of this signal is currently on a pin assigned to timer 4. In this case, I may decide that my design can be modified to not require timer 4, and if I remove timer 4, a solution is now possible. After I've entered all my requirements and resolved all conflicts, I can then generate the summary, C, and header files for my design. To do this, I click the Generate button and select the folder to save the files to. I have touched on some of the main features of the PinMux tool in this video. I hope you have found it useful and thanks for listening.